thank you so much for being here today. It is such an honor and a privilege to be allowed to come into your home and speak to you over over uh, these these wonderful topics that we've been talking about about worship and this segment on worship and this segment on being able to to worship the Lord with our with our total hearts, with our full hearts, and our, our our lives completely devoted to the Lord. So thank you for being here again. To this this is a new show, and we're so excited about it here at Blessing TV, and I thank you for being a part of it. So what we're going to be talking about today is something very, very special, something very um, great and, and just an anointing that takes over our, the, the lives of the ministers. When you are able to reflect on it, when you're able to understand it, so many times you think about why you go through certain things, and you think about why, you know, why am I going through this in my life? Why is this going on in my life? Why is this going on in here and this and that? And, and we forget to understand that all these things that we go through, our stepping stones to take us to what God wants us to be and allowing us to know him in a deeper way, allowing His, allowing us to know God in, in different areas of our lives. I mean, if you never got sick and God didn't heal you, then you wouldn't know God as a healer. If you were never um, in poverty, maybe, and didn't have any, any food to eat, then you wouldn't know God as a provider, would you? So this is allowing us as, as ministers that allows us to know God in a different way. We already love him. And I already love God, and I, 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 I'm in love with God. But I love him more when I go through these things and I understand that he wanted to teach me something. Because regardless of what you may think, my friend, God has a plan. He has a very special plan for you. But he wants you to know him as, his, as your healer, as, his, as your provider, as your best friend, as the father to the fatherless. He wants you to know him in that, in that very special way. But before we begin our program, before we start talking about and really getting into discussion about this topic, I have a very special guest with me, a very special guest that has been my friend, a very, very dear and best friend to my life for over 20 years. And I know what you're thinking. I don't look over 20, but I am. And she's been there all the way with me. She's been there through everything. And she's my, she's been a best friend of mine for 20 years. And I'd like for you to help me welcome Rini Proctor Lopez, who's going to be worshiping with us today. Thank you. 
right. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Georgia Lopez, for that beautiful song. That's, that's an amazing song. Your presence is all I need. Your presence is all I seek. And I, I hope that you've been tuning in. And I hope that you've got a chance to really listen to that, to the words of that song and be a part of that worship music, that worship, uh, that worship melody, melody to the Lord. It was a beautiful. Thank you, Georgia. The scripture that we're going to be reading about is Philippians. It's Philippians 1, 12. And it says, and I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me here has helped me, has helped spread the good news. And it, when we think about that scripture, we think like, how can the things that I've gone through, how is that any useful? How is all of those, the person that I used to be, the past that has gone in my life, how is that going to help me spread the gospel news? Well, I'm sure that you, that you, I'm sure that you're wondering that. I'm sure that you're trying to realize, trying to understand that maybe the things in my life, they, you know, I don't want anybody to know about them. The things that have gone into my life, I don't want anybody to know that I, that I was in prison. I don't want anybody to know that, that, you know, that I uh, was sick and I didn't know what was going on. I, I, that I had all these relationships in the past. I don't want anybody to know those things about me. But, the, but the, here in the word, the word is telling us that everything that has gone on in my, that has happened to me here has helped me to spread the gospel, to spread, in some versions it says, spread the good news. And it's important that you understand the things that have gone on in your life. God is going to use those. God is going to take those things in the past. God is going to take the mistakes that you've made. God is going to take the bad relationships, the bad situations, the bad stuff that has gone on, all that gunk. God takes it and he makes it something beautiful. And he allows you to use that stuff for his glory and to make make it useful so that he so that he can be glorified, that he that you would be able to spread the good news. And to help me with this very, very, very special verse. And maybe you might even be confused because of what we're talking about today. But well, we're gonna help you understand. Amen. So to help me with that is one of my dearest, bestest friends for 20 years, over 20 years. Miss Georgia Lopez. Thank you for being here, Georgia. Thank you for being here, Rini. Thank you. It's just a privilege and honor to be here with you. And when you told me that you were going to do the show, I was so excited because you have so much insight and wisdom, I feel, that everybody needs to hear because you've grown up, you up with them in the ministry, your parents have been pastors. And so I just feel like there's such unique insight that you can bring in. I'm just so excited to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Well, thank you for being here. You look so glamorous. I feel I feel underdressed. I feel like I should be wearing some jewels or something. I feel like you'd be like, well, it's ladies' night. <laughs> you look you look fantastic, Georgia. Fantastic. And you know, when we started talking about, I remember that you would always tell me, Malika, well, you need to have like a little spot or a show or something. You need to, you need to do something. And you even said, I'll help you with it. I said, Well, okay, okay, I'll take you up on that offer. Here you are. Here we are. So thank the Lord, thank God, and thank the viewers for, for allowing us to come to our home today. The song that you did was beautiful. It was beautiful. It is a beautiful song. And just being able to, um, to for you to not only sing, but also play the piano. Tell me about that. How long have you been playing it since? I've been playing piano since I was uh, about 13, 14. Kind of, kind of a late bloomer. A lot of times whenever you do that, people like, say the piano, and they say when they're 9 or 10. But, I mean, it's only when I came to know God that I saw that I had gifts. Because for the longest time that I can remember when I was little, I didn't, I didn't think I was creative at all. I remember in school, anytime a teacher would say, you need to be creative, think of something, I'd be like, oh, because I thought I had nothing to give. And that was just a lie that the enemy wanted me to be wrapped up in. Because it's when I found God, when we cr cr a crash course, me and God, and I began to, he began to show me everything that I could do. That's why I learned how to play piano. I learned how to sing. I grew up here with y'all. I learned how to write. And just, I just learned to, to, to be in, a ch in church and just learned the, 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 the blessing that it comes to stay in a church and, and be willing to, be, to, to learn and be teachable. So many, so many wise people that are here. And that's, I'm glad that you said that, to being able to, be, to, be able to learn and be teachable. Because it's it's one thing when you think you know it all. And so, you know, hey, I've arrived. I've been doing this for 20. Really, you've been doing this for almost 20 years. You know, and so you don't have, nobody can teach you anything, girl. You've got it. Look at the way you're dressed. You've got it all. You're married now. She got married, by the way.
and she got married a couple months, about a month ago, right? So congratulations, congratulations. You met a wonderful, wonderful man. God brought him, um, an amazing man of God into your life. Praise the Lord for that. And so, and, and so you might be thinking that it's, it's so easy for you to say, nobody needs to teach me. I've been doing this for 20 years. But you learned and you've taught, you've, you've paved your life through what the scripture that we're reading today. The scripture that we're reading today, you lived your life that way. And the scripture says, for those of you that are just turning in, this, tuning in, the scripture that we're reading today is Philippians 1, 12. It says, and I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me here has helped to spread the good news. Wow, and I'm sure that you can write a book. And I'm sure you have written, you're an author. Those of you that don't know, Georgia, Georgia Lopez, she's an author. She, she's an amazing writer. And not only in, not only in, in music, she writes beautiful music, but she also She's written novels and she's write, write, written, you know, devotionals and things like that. She's a great writer. And actually, she helps us, she helps us here in the studio um, with show ideas and producing ideas. And so you're just so wonderful. God has really taken what you thought, the, what the enemy thought he could take away from you. What you were just speaking about earlier. No creativity. No, I don't have anything to give. I don't have anything. But the enemy was really trying to shut you down. He was really trying to make you feel like you have nothing. But, oh, my God, when God got a hold of you. When God said, look, greedy prostitute, Lopez, let me tell you, girl, when God got a hold of you, you were writing, you're playing, you're, you're, you're teaching, you're teaching so many of the musicians that we have here. A lot of them, of the way where they've come to now is because of what of you spending your time with them and you allowing them to see that maybe what you have gone through, they're going through at that time. And they don't have anything to give. They don't have anything. They don't know what they're here for. I'm like, God, what, what's going on? And I just, I think about, I remember that you were my first friend when we moved here. When my family moved here to Pasadena, Texas, when we lived here, when we moved here, when we became pastors here, Reedy was already a part of the church here. You are already part of uh, House of Refuge. But you were my first friend. Remember that day? And we were completely opposite. <laughs> completely opposite. I had the, I still have long hair, but I had the long hair and the long skirts and, you know, just really, really girly, 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 and you had the boots and the, the, the dog Martins and the ponytail and the <laughs> completely opposites. And it was, it was a sight to see. We were complete opposites. But we loved each other. I mean, and we didn't, I was trying to say this to, to other people, but, you know, we were little girls when we met, but we had no idea where to be here. We still still be together. Here in God's house, we always call to you. Yeah, we were just little girls, but I believe with all my heart that it was a divine appointment. Yes. We needed each other. We knew that we need each other to to help us to help us know God more and just to do everything that He's called us to do. And so I'm very thankful for God rescuing you when He did. And I just don't know where I'd be without Him. Yeah, I exactly know what you mean. And God has has allowed that our friendship to develop and used for His glory. And we help each other out so much. You helped me so much in the ministry. There's so much that, that I would that I, I, I don't I don't even have the words to say. I don't I wish I could do more for you, do for everything that you help us out, my family, ourselves in the ministry. Thank you so much. And getting back to the scripture. <laughs> this is what happens when you have when you have a, a best friend on your show. This is what happens. You start talking about reminiscing. <laughs> so let's talk about that scripture. And I want you to know that everything that has happened to me here has helped me. How has everything that has gone on in your life, how has that helped you? Well, I think that I believe that people think of trials and stuff. They like why God, why, why? But you wouldn't know God if you didn't have trials. You wouldn't know Him, and so it's because you, when you get to know God, you're going through these things. You get to know Him, and you realize how His compassion is for people, and you take that compassion on. You you want do you want people to know Him like you? You want people to step into the death their divine destiny. You want to see young girls, you know, to them looking at themselves in the mirror and knowing that they're royalty, knowing that they can wait for their for their Prince Charming, the one that God has for them, all these different things. And it's just everything in your life makes you who you are. And it's so beautiful because when we're worshiping, that's poured out. I mean, it just, it, it's, it's so awesome. God is so awesome. He's just a, a supernatural God that has a plan for everything. I can't even understand it. Nobody really can. When we worship God, exactly what you said, when we worship God, everything is poured out. Every insecurity, every past, every thing that has that thought, like what the enemy did to you, 
by trying to make you think that you didn't have any, you didn't have any creativity, that you didn't have anything to give. What the enemy did to you, the enemy does that to, uh, to so many people. He does that to everybody. He lies to them. He makes them think, what happened in your past? You can't, you can't do anything for God because of what you did. God's not going to use you because of the way you are, because of what happened to you when you were a little kid, when you were a little girl, because of the things that you decided to do, because of how you used to drink, or you used to be addicted to these drugs, or you used to be addicted to, to gambling, or whatever you were addicted to, because of that, God can't save you, and then, and then on top of that, he's not going to use you, and the enemy begins to lie, and the people of God, they believe it, and they say, well, you know what, I'm not, and we have to remember that we're not worthy, we're not worthy. To, to be in the, in the presence of God, but God gives us his mercy and his grace, and he allows us to lead his people into worship, and I thank you, God, for that. But we have to remind ourselves that the things that have happened in our past, God wants to use that to push you to the next level, to get you out of there and say, yes, I can, I, I can, I can stand up. Yes, I made it through a hard marriage, but we're still together. Yes, I, I was addicted to alcohol, but God saved me, and here's my song to God. Yes, I was addicted to drugs, but God healed me, and now I'm going to write a book about it so that people can be healed. Whatever you've gone on through, whatever has happened in your life, the book of Philippians is telling us, use it for the gospel. Don't use it to be embarrassed. Don't use it to be ashamed. You know, the things that have happened in your life, God, wipe those things away. Ain't no looking back anymore. Ain't nothing good there for you anyway. Use that to preach the gospel. And this is true because... I know that some of my most lowest nights that I've had, I would write a song. It's like out of that deep turmoil, out of all of that that pressure and that distress and you're so disturbed, but God can make something beautiful come out of that. That's where the most beautiful things come out of it. It's so true that what we go through does advance the gospel because God is going to use that for his honor and glory. You may not see it right now. Of course, you're not going to understand why you're in the middle of it. But it's only when God gets you there and you look back, you know, your addiction is a sermon. Your whatever baggage that you had, hey, that's made your character. And now we're going to use you now in the church. You know? Hallelujah. And it's like, you, you see, you see, um, like, hey, for example, like my sister. My sister, when she was a child, she was adventurous and she was running around everywhere and she was loud and she was, she could never sit down. But we knew that God was going to use that, that, that personality. God was going to use it for his glory. And we have to remember that everything in our lives, God is going to take that. He's going to stretch it. He's going to use it for his, for his glory. He's going to use it, like the word says, to preach the gospel. So all of that, we joke now about, we joke, right? We joke now about my sister. My sister and my brother, they were very, very adventurous kids. They could never, you could never find them. Where are they? They're, oh, there, there she is on the tree. Or where's my brother? Oh, there he is. He got on the back of a train and he took off. You know, those things. <laughs> God uses that adventure spirit for his glory. So God uses the things that you were, that maybe that you had kept you down. He turns them around. He says, I'm going to, you're going to write a book on how to teach people how to get out of addiction. How, you're going to write a book on how to teach people how to be a good wife, how to be a, a how to be a, 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 a giver. God's going to take all those things that you thought that you couldn't do and he used it to preach his gospel. I want to encourage you and I want you to remember that everything that has happened in your life, God is using it for the glory. God is using it to preach, to, to reach people in the gospel. I wouldn't be able to reach somebody that, that didn't, that, that I wouldn't be able to believe if I would have never been hungry one day. God brought food to my home. He, he literally did. My family was hungry. My family didn't have to buy groceries. And when we got home, there was a bag, there was bags and bags of groceries. We don't know where it came from. But I wouldn't have gotten to know God as my provider if I wouldn't have gone through that. So whatever you've gone through in your life, oh, get ready. Because God is going to use it. He's going to use it for something big. Thank you so much. We're going to go into a worship song. I encourage you to worship with us. Bless the Lord today. Yeah. 
draw me closer to you, Lord. I encourage you today. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for letting us be a part of your day. I encourage you to let everything that has happened in your life, let God turn it around so that he can use it and so that you can use it to preach the gospel. Everything that has happened in your life happens for a reason. God 